Hi everyone, Byron Martin here at Logis Greenhouses and today we're going to be talking about carnivorous plants. They actually are great plants for the home and have been very entertaining for especially children but adults alike in that they have mechanisms in which they catch insects. And so today we're going to be talking about four of the carnivorous plants that we grow here at Logis. So first we have the dresseras that we grow which are also known as the sundews and these actually are some of them are native here in New England and grow farther into the south as well as some tropical varieties. They're actually quite easy to grow as long as we sort of replicate their native habitat which is a bog and most of the carnivorous plants that we grow are either high humidity or a bog plants and we grow them in sphagnum moss and that goes for all of them. The good thing about sphagnum moss is it is a sustainable potting mix that we can use and we generally keep them in a tray of water and most of them, with the exception of the Nepenthes, those are our pitcher plants, grow out in full sun. So you don't want to grow these in an area that gets shade or diffusion. You want to have them right on a bright sunny window. That's really important. Or they can actually be grown under artificial light if you don't have um, direct sunlight. And so what we do is we grow them in trays and then we give them water. Important in their culture is to not give them chlorinated water or water that has high levels of fertilizer in it. So if you happen to be in an area that has chlorine water, make sure you set that out overnight so the chlorine evaporates before you water them. And then it's just a very simple thing. To water them, you just keep your tray with water in it. And you don't ever have to top water them. You simply just pour the water into the saucer and let them wick it up. And this obviously represents the bog where it's always moist. Um, next we have the Venus flytrap, the Dionia, and this is native to the U.S. And they can be found in South Carolina, even as far north as New Jersey in swamps. And the key to that is that they do need that winter chill to put them into dormancy and to let them go through their normal life cycle. So if you're growing them in the house, put them up against a cold window in the winter time. And if they go dormant, go back into the pot, that's normal. And then in springtime, they'll reemerge out of that. Sometimes the traps die and that's actually normal and you can simply prune those or pull those off. If you feed them, which we recommend you don't do, that will actually cause the trap to die off also. So I know it's really hard not to get in there and touch them and watch them close, but you don't want to do that a lot because that exhausts the plant and eventually that trap will actually die off. And so just to show you, if a fly crawls into the trap, the trap closes. They do digest the insect and feed the plant. And some of the carnivorous plants somewhat rely on that for nutrients, but it's best not to feed them. They will get enough fertility from the media that you're growing them in. I know that there can be a small amount of fertilizer during their active growth added to the media, but don't overdo it. I mean, it's not like a regular house plant where you can dump on full strength. They want to be very, very light when you add that. And next we have our Saracenias. The Saracenias are actually the hardy pitcher plants, some of which grow here in New England and farther south. Really are very beautiful in terms of their color. Some of them have white and red on the top of them. We have the native one here, which is Saracenia rubra. It has a very, very thick um, tube on it. One of the things that the Saracenias will do is you'll get some die back on the tops of these, and then these long tubes or the traps themselves will die off, and that somewhat happens seasonally. Generally, they're wintered over under cooler conditions and then put out in the summer where they explode into growth and they come back in, and by the time we get to springtime, they look pretty poor, but they put out again and then they explode back into growth. And these actually have a long tube that the insect climbs down into and gets stuck in there and there's a water like in our Nepenthes here that consumes them or dissolves them. It's a great plant for your outdoor gardens, Grow them in pools during the summertime and then move them into a place where you keep them wet and sunny during the winter time. And lastly, we have our tropical pitcher plants. These are Nepenthes. This is a very large family of carnivorous plants and they really are fairly easy to grow, but sometimes a little temperamental to create the pitchers on them. 
and that is generally related to the level of humidity that they're grown in. So if you've got one and it won't flower and see these tips coming out and that pitcher doesn't form, generally the rule of thumb is to increase humidity until that happens. The varieties that we grow here at Logies are pretty tolerant to that, so they've been selected so that they will do well in the home. These also we grow in sphagnum, and these little pitchers actually fill up with water, which if you tip them over, the water would pour out, and you don't want to do that. That's actually the plant making that and then what the bug does is he's attracted to it, climbs in, falls into the water, and they get dissolved and absorbed by the plant. There are some that are actually 12 inches long with columns in them that are four or five inches across that'll actually eat animals like rats and mice and stuff like that. Next time you're at a botanical garden, look up the Nepenthes collections and see if they have one. Well, thanks for watching. There's a little bit of information on growing carnivorous plants here at Logies. If you'd like more information, visit us at logies.com.